Uh, so I'll start with a confession. And this is kind of painful for me to admit, but I'm just going to do it. So I did this talk this past weekend. I did it last minute. This is not my style, but I had to do it. I had a conference of my own last weekend on life hacking, and I was building a new startup right before that. So there's really no way I could get everything I needed to get done in that amount of time. And so I don't feel so alone up here. I'm going to ask, does this happen to anyone else? Does anyone else actually know what I feel? If so, please raise your hand. Ever have too much to do and not have time? Please raise both hands if you really know what I'm talking about. <laughs> OK, great. So we're all humans. We're all imperfect humans trying to get by. And I want to highlight the students in the room, because I think many of you live your life by cramming. So this talk is especially for you. This is uh, one of the gurus in the space, David Allen. So I'd like to start by telling you the story of Danny O'Brien. So Danny is a British tech journalist. He's a geek, and like many of us, he's also a serial procrastinator. So in 2004, unlike many of us, he asked all of his friends that were really productive how they did it. And he compiled all of these insights into a talk he gave at the O'Reilly Emerging Technology Conference. So this talk he called Life Hacks. Tech Secrets of Overprolific Alpha Geeks. Sounds kind of weird, but it caught on fire. People loved it, and the internet blew up. So, fittingly enough, Lifehack became a thing. In 2005, it was voted runner-up to the most useful new term, right after a podcast. <coughs> so, Danny's original definition was around quick and dirty techniques, or shortcuts that geeks could use to get stuff done. But nowadays, many of you have probably heard of it, in the genre of top 10 uses of vinegar, or something like that, which I find to be rubbish. It belittles the term. So I think life hacking is actually a serious thing. I think life hacking is finding the most efficient means to improving your life. So life hacking is around experimenting. It's learning about yourself, and it's trying to improve every area of your life. So a good life hack is centered around the biggest bang for your buck. It helps you efficiently and effectively grow. There are thousands of life hacks you can use, and if you embed those into your life, it allows you to do and be more. It helps you level up. So I think this is extremely important for us to start as early as possible. I think kids should be life hacking, because when you do this, you start getting better at getting better. And that leads to this cumulative advantage that makes you unstoppable. So in the end, I think this is an unfair advantage. And I think that everyone deserves it. So we're going to start right now. Together, we're going to life hack. I'm going to ask you all to please stand. I want you to meet your neighbor and share one life hack that you've done in your life that has given you the greatest amount of results for the least amount of effort. Go ahead and share very quickly, and then sit back down. Hi, what's it? You're my nearest neighbor. What's your life hack? Life hack. One thing you've done. To increase my efficiency, mm -hmm. I would say, I, I, I'd say, can I say something that I want to do yes. to increase it? Is I want to get up there. Got it. Okay, good one. After you've shared, please take your seats. Life hackers are efficient. All right. I love that energy burst. Get you do the docking. So I could like to get some audience submissions. What are we heard? What were the favorites one, ones you heard? Someone shout it out. What's that? Emailing on the tube. What else? Forgetting the normal day patterns and just working when it suits you. Got it. One more? Hide your phone. I love it. OK, so those are all fantastic. I am going to probably award this gentleman. I learned a little hack. Uh, throw things at your audience if you want to keep their attention. So here's some chocolate. Heads up. <laughs> Great. And please share that like your other life hacks. So thank you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you a little bit about how you actually life hack. Uh, one thing I always ask myself is, what would Batman do? Batman was the ultimate life hacker. He was human, he was imperfect like us, but he could do almost anything. 
So I just say, what would he do? If that's not clear enough, there is a five-step process, which is loosely based on the scientific method, which I'll go through really quickly. All right, so first step up is to set your goal. Decide what you want to work on. What are you going to improve? Second is to research. Try to find or invent a more efficient way of reaching that goal. Third is to do the experiment. So a lot of times you're not going to know until you get out there and just try. Fourth is analyze. Ask what went well, what went wrong, and maybe what you could do differently. And then go and do it again. So iterate. Life hacking is all about getting better and better. It's a never-ending process. So that's how I do it. I'm going to do something a little weird now. I'm going to actually talk about this talk. So I'm going to show you the life hacks I used to get this talk done in just two days this past Saturday and Sunday. So uh, my goal was simple. It was just basically not to completely screw this up. That was it. I wasn't going too ambitious. Uh, and the methods, well, this is an interesting thing. I, like a good life hacker, I took data. So I ended up using 65 unique life hacks, tools or techniques to get this done. And if you include repeats, I did 113. So that's quite a bit, and that's how I got so much of this done. Um, I found I did about 37 tasks over 27 hours. It's not too bad for two days. And what I need to do is actually just show you a few things, because I'm, I like to not talk. I like to actually show. So I'm going to reveal some of the tricks I used. Not too, too crazy, but I'm going to go through a, a few of them just so you know what happened. The first, but not the last, is a nice little blue light device. If you don't have this, it shines blue light in your eyes, and it helps with a little burst of energy. It's a replacement for caffeine. It's also good if you have mood disorders or sleep disorders. So I use this one quite a bit. Um, but what if you want to block the blue light? What if you're trying to go to bed? So, you know, the screens you're using, your phones, your computers right before bed emit blue light, and that's affecting the melatonin production. So if you don't mind looking like a dork, this is one thing you can do. Yes, you look silly, but it blocks out a lot of the blue light. So wear it for a few hours before bed, you get deeper sleep. Nothing else you have to do. And a really basic one, which a lot of us do on flights, but you can do it every night. Put on a sleep mask, block the ambient light, and it really helps with getting a deeper sleep. It's cheaper than having to blacklight your entire room. So also really good for naps. I do this all the time. I'm going to show you one that's not quite quick results, but this is a neurofeedback device. So you wear it, and you train your brain over time to become a little bit more uh, calm, a little bit more focused. So it's good for accelerating your meditation practice. All right, if you really need to focus, um, one thing I do both at night and during the day is earplugs. So if you put these in, it blocks some of the light. Can't do this one. Uh, it's a good way of trying to minimize all the ambient noise, especially if you're sleeping. So if you live with people who snore, who are moving around a lot, this helps a lot. Um, but if you really need to get serious during the day, so I was on target, I had to do this. Uh, I've trained everyone around me that whenever I put on noise-canceling headphones, please do not disturb me. I can barely hear my voice right now. So this works really, really well. Also very dorky, but hey, it's a reminder to people around you to not disturb you. <laughs> By the way, I still got interrupted 20 times in two days, <laughs> even though I tried my best. So um, one of the other ones is you're trying to stay focused, and you realize you still need to eat, you're getting hungry, but it feels like a distraction. So one thing is a nutritional drink that's meant to replace the need to eat. So this takes about seven minutes to prepare in the morning, and it makes three meals. So a little bit more efficient. If you're on the fast food diet, this might be a slightly better thing than your normal. But since I do still like chocolate, I still like food, uh, a simple little hack that you can use with this is reward yourself every time you get a task done. Give yourself a piece of dark chocolate. If you go really dark, it's nice and healthy, keeps you motivated. It's a great tool. I don't know why we don't do it more often. Also on the food one, and this is going to be a little bit strange. Uh, so coffee is great. Coffee with grass-fed butter is even better. So put it in your coffee in the morning, stir it up in a blender, you get a nice latte, and the healthy fats from the butter actually helps you with brain performance. It keeps you on. It's surprisingly good. Just a few more. This is uh, my little secret weapon. It's a simple kitchen timer. You all know what this is, but do you know what it can do? So I work in 25-minute, 50-minute, or 90-minute cycles, and I take a break. I always do press the button, 
let it go, I'm focused, and then I take my break, I do my social media, I go do my distractions, then batch that kind of thing, use this, it's, m it's magic. So I actually want to say that everyone here is also a life hacker. Uh, I want you to go ahead and prove this by pulling out your phone right now. Pull out your smartphone. <coughs> All right. So take a look at your phone. This is your uh, life hacker's dream. It's an arsenal of tools to help you achieve whatever you want. If you have a goal, almost certainly there's an app to help you achieve that. So I use dozens. I encourage you to take a look and see which ones are good for you. Uh, I got one more on my person. Contrary to what might be expected, when I need to get stuff done, I need to move. So this is an activity tracker that reminds me to go and move. It counts the number of steps I have, uh, and I try to go for the 10,000 steps each day. So I'm moving a lot when I do this. And a little bit similarly, this is a device that sits on your, on your lapel, and you, it vibrates whenever you start slouching. So if you're going like this, or you're going like this, it just gently reminds you, hey, you're tired. You either need to take a break, or you need to keep going. Just depends on what the story is. Uh, and I have to end this part just with my absolute favorite life hacking tool. It's the humble sticky note. I've been carrying sticky notes on my person since I was 13 years old, believe it or not. I have a terrible memory, so this is my external memory. Uh, it's the reason I don't forget that much. So I wrote a lot of this talk on these sticky notes, especially late at night when I was like, ah, smartphones affect your sleep, right? So you turn it on, this is a lot faster, a lot easier. It's a little bit more soci less socially awkward. So I still use them. I met the gentleman who invented the sticky note and got him to sign it. It's the story of my life. <laughs> so those are some of the tools. Uh, there are also a lot of techniques which are equally as important. Uh, I'll just share three. So on Saturday, I set up what's called a personal hackathon. So you set a date, time, and location. You get a group of people, and you get really clear on the tasks you're trying to accomplish. A hackathon usually going to build a startup or a product over a weekend. You can instead use it to do your own work. Just do it in collaborative cycles. So that's really helpful. Uh, one of the things I like to do is called uh, visible tasks. So I'll put all the tasks I need to do on a whiteboard in the order that I need to do them, and that way I can cross them off throughout the day. And anyone's walking by can see, hey, how am I doing on my list? They know very clearly. It's a nice accountability hack. Uh, and then finally, because there's so much stress to doing this, one of the most important techniques I used was practicing self-compassion. So a lot of positive self-talk went into this talk. I couldn't have done it without soothing myself. So those are some of my favorite tools. I really, it's hard to imagine getting things done without this sort of repertoire now, because society is so crazy. And what I think all this stuff is, is actually a meta skill. I think life hacking teaches you how to get better at getting better. And it is an unfair advantage that we all should, should have. So to help people uh, to get this, to help spread this to everyone that we can, I'm part of a team that's building something called the kit.me. So the kit is an open research project to collect all the world's life hacks and then force rank them for usefulness. The we're trying to build a map to help you efficiently and effectively grow. So we've seeded it with 750 tools, and we're really happy to take in any, more, any of your suggestions, the more the merrier. So it's not quite Batman's utility belt, but it is the next best thing. And because life hacking is all about getting stuff done, I'm going to issue you a challenge. I want you to take action. So I challenge you each to start seriously life hacking right now. I want you to pick one of the life hacking tools or techniques that you've never used before and try it in the next seven days, next 168 hours. And to do this, because we like to get stuff done, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and look under your seat and pull out the sticky note that we tried to hide there. And I need you to write six things on it. You need to write your name and your email and the specific life hack that you intend to do in the next seven days. Got it? I also need you to write the date, time, and location that you're going to do said life hack. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to get it done. All right, so when you're done, I want you to take these, these sticky notes and put them on the mirrors in the back so everyone else can see what you're going to do in the next seven days. And I also want you to take a good hard look at yourself while you're looking at the mirror and try to remember the person you used to dream of becoming because you still can. And to make this a little bit easier on you, I'm going to actually reward someone here with $100 US. Whoever does the most compelling change in the next seven days, I'm going to give you cash just because I really care about you, help you changing. I know it's hard and life hacking is about making it a little bit easier. 
So all you have to do is put the sticky notebook on the wall and then email us at the kit and let us know what happened. Okay. So I just want to say thank you so much for your time. And I really look forward to hearing your life hacking stories. So, but please get started now because the clock is ticking. Thank you. <laughs>